Hi guys, Eddie here with another video. Today we're going to be discussing why TikTok, uh, the popular video sharing app, uh, is potentially getting banned. Uh, and actually, more uh, excitingly, diving into uh, how it's being used potentially as a surveillance device and what implications that has uh, for things like the US election. So I'm doing another video like this because obviously you enjoyed the Wirecard video, which got 50,000 views, which is great. Um, so please do subscribe to the channel below. Go and watch that Wirecard video if you haven't already. Uh, but let's get into it. So what is TikTok, first of all? So TikTok is this Chinese video sharing social media networking service, and it's owned by a company called Byte dance. Uh, and essentially, this is a Beijing based internet technology company. It was founded in 2012 by Zhang Yingming. Uh, and it essentially creates short dance, lip sync, comedy and talent videos. Uh, and it's really gaining some popularity uh, amongst Western users, uh, particularly in the United States. Um, but it is fast growing the reputation of this Chinese state spying tool potentially. Um, and while TikTok has never really uh, agreed or argued uh, that it shares its data with the Chinese government, um, this new Hong Kong law uh, would likely have actually undermined uh, the company's case if it continued to operate uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, it's recently been banned in India uh, along with 58 other uh, Chinese apps. Um, and this comes after the border clash between India and China. This uh, TikTok app actually merged with a US company called Musical.ly, uh, if you are familiar with that. And obviously that's a, uh, an easy way to gain a kind of domestic base in the United States. Uh, and it's been really repeatedly criticized by US politicians um, of becoming or being a national security threat um, because of the ties to China. Uh, and they essentially allege that the company could be compelled to support and cooperate uh, with the intelligence work controlled by the Chinese uh, Communist Party. And of course, the app denies that it carries out any acts of censorship on behalf of the Chinese government. Um, and it did say in a recent statement, it wouldn't do uh, or share uh, the information if asked. Um, TikTok says also um, all of the data uh, is stored outside of China, and this includes payment, payment information, age, gender, contacts. Uh, and I'm actually later in the video going to discuss how this uh, tech engineer reverse engineered the app, and he found some really shocking things. Um, TikTok has 800 million users at the moment, and this is up from 500 million uh, in November. Uh, and the funny thing, obviously, about this year, coronavirus, everyone is at home on their phones constantly, uh, obviously using this app, uh, but also it falls quite suspiciously uh, in an election year. And if you flash back all the way to 2016, there were reports, um, you know, widely reported from all major news uh, information services that Russia had some part to play uh, in influencing uh, the US election via social media apps like Facebook uh, and Twitter. Um, and this app is kind of interesting because it provides users with this taste of virality, so going viral, to entice them to stay on this platform. Um, and it's actually quite uh, sinisterly designed where your first post will actually get a lot of likes, regardless of how good it is. Um, and then obviously that entices you to you know, keep using the app and keep um, providing uh, basically information. Um, and this comes off um, the US looking to ban these social media apps. So Pompeo's come out and said um, he doesn't want to get in front of um, Donald Trump, the president, but it's something that they were, we're looking at. Uh, and this is basically this national security concern over how TikTok Remember, it's owned by ByteDance in Beijing and how they handle uh, the user data. And is that going to be shared uh, with the Chinese uh, 
Communist Party. Um, and this obviously comes on the back of US-China re- relations uh, souring yet again, um, and these kind of tensions regarding the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, and obviously, Hong Kong, again, another contentious issue, but I did do another video on that. Uh, if you just type in US-China trade war, it's also on the Amplify YouTube channel. Um, it is losing a lot of international markets. So um, India uh, is one that's come out and said TikTok is now banned um, in India. Australia uh, as well is basically uh, saying that it's going to ban it. So it's not just um, the United States, it's lots of other nations. Uh, and of course, this has a geopolitical twinge uh, to it. But actually, ByteDance forecasted that one billion in advertising revenue uh, would have been there in India. It's one of the biggest markets that TikTok has. And as you can see uh, from this chart, which is not specific to India, but it's in terms of the number of US adults actually using uh, TikTok, you can clearly see that it's, you know, gone through the roof since uh, the chart started in October 2017, all the way up to the data available on, on March 20. Um, it's also owned by you know some of China's most elusive billionaires, uh, and it's he- linked heavily um, to a surveillance app called uh, Douyin as well. Um, but this is some of the concerns, endemic cyberbullying, you know, it's easy to put up fake videos, propaganda, you know, there's all with all social media companies as a kind of element of, um, you know, controlling the content. Uh, and, you know, how much should you how far should you go? How, um, you know, relaxed should you be? And obviously, Twitter, Facebook are all coming under fire and have been under fire for this. Um, of course, it's a platform for child abuse and human exploitation. Um, and there's, you know, a ton of um, users that obviously want to use the app for the wrong reasons, uh, with the uh, kind of user base being, t- you know, targeted towards that younger generation. Um, addiction as well, all the kind of common themes, privacy, uh, and even hackers have exploited the weak code um, in in the app. And this is, of course, quite uh, synonymous with free apps. But this is the juicy part. Uh, and I wanted to get to this relatively quickly. And this actually comes uh, from a Reddit thread of a tech guy, um, a tech engineer that essentially reverse engineered this app. Uh, and he basically claimed that he felt very confident in stating that he had a very good understanding about how the act actual app operated when he did this analysis uh, a few months ago. Um, And he's basically termed it as a data collection service that is thinly veiled as a social social network. Uh, And calling it an advertising platform is an understatement. And he's claimed that it's essentially a malware um, you know, software that is targeting children. Uh, and he's saying, as a warning, don't let your family and friends use it. But the interesting things of what it tracks, so phone hardware, so CPU type, number of course, hardware ID, screen dimensions, DPI, memory usage, disk space, um, so other apps you've installed, even some that you've deleted uh, that shows up in your analytics payload, um, through cash and things like that, that um, it can actually track uh, everything network related. This is IP, local IP, router Mac, your Mac, the Wi-Fi access point name, whether or not you've jailbroken your iPhone or Android device. Um, more very worryingly, GPS is pinging roughly every 30 seconds. Um, which is incredibly worrying, obviously, if we're talking about tracking uh, users' movements and things like that. Um, And there's things like zero authentication. Um, And the scariest part, he says, um, is that most of the logging that they're doing on this is remotely configurable. Uh, And unless you essentially reverse every single one of their native libraries, um, and he says, have fun reading that, you know, it's it's going to be pro- provide some real problems for you. Um, so there's several different also protection protections in place to prevent you from reversing or debugging the app as well. And scarily, it kind of morphs and the app uh, behavior changes slightly if they know what you're trying to do, um, which is really really worrying. Uh, and here's the thing: they don't want to know how much information you to know how much information they're collecting on you. Uh, and there's all these kind of things in place uh, to do so. So there's really worrying things coming out uh, of the back end uh, code of this. Uh, and of course, 
They're now uh, pulling out uh, of Hong Kong due to this new security law uh, in light of recent events. This is from uh, the company itself. They've decided to stop the operations of the TikTok app uh, in Hong Kong. Um, and the exit from Hong Kong is coming uh, within uh, the within the next days. Um, so TikTok has actually been trying to change its global image. Of course, it's got a very Western name, uh, you know, unlike a, a traditional, let's say, Chinese name. So obviously trying to appeal to all these Western users and things like that. Uh, and TikTok's also consistently said that if asked, it would never hand over data to Beijing. So why does this all matter? You know, it's very uh, funny timing, right? Where the obviously the popularity of this app um, has kind of emerged in this year of the election, right? Or even before that from 2017, kind of roaming into this. And of course, there's uh, echoes of Russia interfering in the US election, according to reports. Um, and the situation now with TikTok is so serious that uh, US sen senators branded TikTok as a counterintelligence threat that we cannot ignore. And that is a, an actual quote. Uh, and in December 2019, the Australian research report warned that ByteDance actively collaborates with security bureaus across China, and it's uniquely uh, susceptible to other problems that come with the closeness of the censorship and surveillance apparatus uh, of the Communist Party uh, of China-led uh, state. Um, so through this meteoric growth, um, this kind of social media um, service uh, is thinly veiled, according to reports, as really just an information surveillance collection uh, device. And of course, with the uh, acquisition of uh, Musical.ly, uh, they've gained immediate access um, to the American market. And of course, with the Western name as well, this appeals um, to Western users. So of course, the timing is very suspect. Um, so let's watch how this develops. And of course, um, in the run up to November, you know, Trump is going to be bashing China to strum up his domestic base. Uh, and of course, this comes uh, as a result of the kind of pronged effect of the trade war, the currency war, uh, and all of these different things. So I hope you enjoyed this again, another investigative piece, just like the Wirecard one. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any other um, videos like this. But have a good day uh, and take care.